Hi, today we're going to look at Matthew chapter 20. However, I'm going to start in Matthew 18 verse 11 because I believe it's vital to what we're going to talk about here in just a moment. So in chapter 18, we see that Jesus, while in Galilee, makes this comment, For the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. So now let's fast forward to chapter 20, and he is just about ready to go up to Jerusalem with his disciples. And let's take it from there, verse 17. It says, as Jesus was about to go up to Jerusalem, he took his 12 disciples aside by themselves. And on the way, he said to them, behold, we're going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes. They will condemn him to death and will deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and scourge and crucify him. And on the third day, he will be raised up. Now let's fast forward because we see that Jesus had a prophecy that he predicted. But not only was it predicted, but the prophecy was fulfilled. Just let's go a couple chapters ahead. So let's look at chapter 26, verses 47 to 50. It says, and while he was still speaking, that's Jesus, Judas, one of the twelve, came up, accompanied by a great multitude with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he who was betraying him gave them a sign, saying, Whomever I shall kiss, he is the one. Seize him. And immediately he went to Jesus and said, Hell, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you've come to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. There's a prophecy being fulfilled. Now let's go to chapter 27, verses 1 and 2. It says, Now when morning had come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people, hmm, chief priest, another prophecy fulfilled, took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. Oh wow, another prophecy fulfilled. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him up to Pilate the governor. A prophecy fulfilled because Pilate was a Gentile. And not only was it him as a Gentile, but let's look at verses 26 to 31 that says, Then Pilate released Barabbas for, for them, but after having Jesus scourged, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor, these would be Gentile Roman soldiers, took Jesus into Praetorium and gathered the whole Roman cohort around him. Can you imagine? A cohort is anywhere from 480 to 600 soldiers. One man had to be guarded by all those people. Must have been something special about Jesus. Verse 28, And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after wearing a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they kneeled down before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spat on him and took the reed and began to beat him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took off his robe and put his garments on him and led him away to crucify him. Boom, boom. Prophecy, prophecy fulfilled. Isn't that exciting? But it doesn't end there. Let's go to verse 28, verses 1 to 6, because this is where I say it's the hallelujah part. Verse uh, 1 of 28. Now, after the Sabbath, it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. That would be the third day. Boom. Prophecy fulfilled. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave, and behold, a severe earthquake earthquake had occurred for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it and his appearance was like lightning and his garment was as white as snow and the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men and the angel answered and said to the women don't be afraid for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified but he is not here he has risen just as he said there is our full prophecy fulfilled why is this important because a man cannot make a prophecy and it be fulfilled, but God himself can. Jesus was God. God came in the, in the form of his son, his one and only son, so that he could die for us. So what is the purpose of this prophecy? The whole thing is about salvation. Let's go back to chapter 18, verse 11. The son of man came to save that which was lost. That was the prophecy's purpose, was to save the man, the woman, the child, that believed that Jesus said he was who he was and that he did what he said he was going to do to be um, put to death, to be crucified, buried, and raised again the third day, the gospel as we know it. And we know in Romans 1.16, even Paul said, it is the power of the gospel that leads people to salvation. So my friend, I hope that you understand the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. His prophecy was predicted. It was fulfilled and the purpose is salvation for you.